What's up, family? Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. Mark the Messenger. We're back in your video, man. This one's like about seven signs God is delivering you from demonic cycles and demonic strongholds. These are all things I'm writing on this whiteboard or things that I went through, things that I battled with, which I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys could relate. Just my sharing my testimony, also sharing God's word too. Let's go, let's go, man. The number one sign you will see, this is the number one sign that you will see when God is delivering you from demonic cycles, demonic strongholds. So what the enemy does, remember the enemy knows the things that you're about to receive, okay? Just like how before Christ was had his ministry and he was preaching the word, the devil came to him when he was fasting for 40 days and 40 nights because before that, you know, the devil knew what God, what Christ was about to do in the, in the world, you know? So the devil tried to stop that, okay? There's many times in the Bible where people were about to receive their blessing and the devil tries to come. You know, even the Bible says a parable uh, where Jesus talked about in Luke chapter 8, verse 11, 15, the parable of the sower. One hears, hears a word, but then here comes the devil and takes away the word out of their hearts, okay? At least they believe, okay? So best believe when you're about to be delivered from a demonic cycle, for demonic spirit, unclean spirit, or demonic stronghold, best believe the devil, he is going to attack, okay? So Satan will try to attack to get you to give up, to get you to be demotivated, to get you to, you know, give up the faith and make you feel like, okay, maybe I'm not worthy enough. The enemy loves doing that, okay? So when the devil's attacking you, okay, when you're doing the right thing, you should rejoice because the devil doesn't want you to, to walk that straight and narrow path of salvation. The devil wants you to be doing the things that you used to do because the things that you used to do were, you know, mostly, not, not just everybody, but, you know, the old ways, the old lifestyle before you became born again was a sinful lifestyle. And the devil wants you to keep you in that because when you're living a sinful lifestyle, you're living a life that does not seek repentance. You're not going to grow spiritually. You know, you're not going to be what God calls you to be when you're just living in willful sin. Okay. And I know a lot of people don't want to hear that, but that's just the truth. Okay. So the devil, he does not want you to reach high levels. He doesn't want you to reach a new level. And like I always tell you guys, new levels, new devils. And when God is breaking you free from the stronghold, he's breaking you free from the strongholds, these devils are going to pop up. Okay. The devil will do his best. Okay. He will attack you in your dreams. Let's say if you gave up corn, okay, you gave up your lust and you're going to have a dream of a succubus or incubus. You're going to have a, a sexual dream. This is not by mistake. This is not, not a coincidence. This is what you call spiritual warfare, okay? So whatever sin that you were, that was keeping you in bondage, whatever demonic cycle, whatever stronghold, Satan is going to work through that stronghold that you open. Remember, because we open those doors for the strongholds. The strongholds is just coming to our life. We open it mo most of the time because I know there's times, let's say you're a child, someone messes with you, you know, so, but for the most part, all these strongholds and unclean spirits, we open that door for them to come in, you know, through disobedience, through sin, through rebellion. Okay, so always keep that in mind, man. When the devil is attacking you for doing the right thing, continue to do the right thing. But just know that he has to flee from you uh, eventually. When you're submitted to God and you're continuously resisting him, he has to leave you alone. Okay, just like when Christ was fasting, the devil left him alone because the devil saw, okay, I can't mess with him. He's too wise. Okay, he, he's, really, he's not lukewarm. He's not double-minded. He really loves God. He's really about his walk. All right, I'm going to leave him alone, and I'm going to get the next person. I'm going to get the one who's just carnal, the one who's just religious, the one who's just lukewarm. I'm going to go mess with him. That's what the devil is going to do. So he's going to leave you alone when you're submitted to him, when you're resisting him, and he's going to go get someone else who's, you know, living double-minded, being lukewarm, opening doors. So the number, the number two sign that God is breaking you free from the demonic struggles, breaking you free from the demonic cycles. And I've been through this, man, so this, I'm, I'm really passionate when I'm speaking up. But anyways, so it says, you will no longer desire to sin, okay? Not to say that you're never gonna sin again, okay? We all know what the Bible says. If a man says he's without sin, he is a liar and the truth is not in him, okay? So always, and that's in 1 John chapter 1, verse uh, 8 to 10. I'll leave a verse somewhere on the screen here or maybe over there. Okay, so you no longer desire to sin. That's one sign, guys, that you're, you're breaking free. Okay, you're not only you're breaking free, you're getting stronger. Okay, you're leveling up. Okay, remember, like I said, guys, always keep this in mind. Always meditate on this. New levels, new devils. When you're about to level up, prepare. Okay, be wise, walk in wisdom, walk in understanding, you know, let the Holy Spirit, you know, work in your life so you can see the things, you know, before they come. So you can see these devils before they come. You can see it. You can see it. So your number two sign is you're no longer, des you no longer desire to sin, okay? You want to you live this righteous path. You want to be set apart, okay? And like, and like I said, 
You know, I'm not saying that we're never going to sin again. We're human beings. We're always going to fall short eventually, you know, but we're trying our best. You know, most importantly, remember, God, he tries the heart. OK, so he knows that, you know, you know, he knows that you're resisting the devil. He knows that you're submitted to him and you no longer have a desire to live your old lifestyle, living in the flesh, living in sin, you know, living, being like the world. OK, sure. You're, you're becoming set apart more and more. OK, number three is God will isolate you. So your mind is focused on him, okay? So God will isolate you because your mind is focused on him and there's no more temptations. That's one thing that I noticed when God isolated me, it was no more temptations because back then I was weak. So if I was with the wrong person, and even though I may have told that person, no, I'm not sure to do that no more, and I see them doing it next to me, I'm gonna fall, you know, I'm gonna fall short because it's, you know, I'm being tempted. And even though it's not, it's not that person's fault, it's my fault, because I shouldn't even be around them. Okay. So one thing that I noticed that God, He completely isolated me from everybody. And as, and as that was happening, I was becoming more focused on him, more focused on his plan in my life. Not only that, I started praying more. I started meditating on God's word more. Uh, more. I started uh, reading my Bible more. Most importantly, you know, that's one of the most things I probably the most, number one thing that I did when I was isolated was I, I would read my Bible, guys, seven hours a day. Like, no joke. I would be reading it all day it was no more temptations no more distractions okay so that's the one thing that god will do when he's delivering you from demonic cycles and delivering you from the strongholds and as i was isolated i gained an intense amount of wisdom you know knowledge and understanding so you know when i was out of my isolation season i knew better okay you know i knew that just because i see someone doing things i'm not gonna just do it because they're doing it you know and i know that god rewards me for my obedience so when i'm resisting these temptations when i'm resisting the urge to fall into willful sin i know that the heavenly father is going to bless me you know it might not be instantly but i know that me staying on the right path the blessings will come okay and i, and I also understand that sin is death you know that's what's the wages of sin is death and me falling short to something that's just temporary dopamine temporary pleasure is this is this a waste of time bro it's just a waste of time and then on top of that now you gotta fight since you opened up the door now you have to fight those demons now you have to fight those strongholds i'm like i'm not i'm not i'm, I'm good bro <laughs> i'm good i'm good man so that's another sign guys when God's isolating you, and now, of course, people could be, when God try to isolate someone, you know, they keep on opening those doors. But, you know, you being wise, you being a, ch a chosen one, when God's isolating you, you, you have the understanding why this is happening. And I'm okay, I'm going to put in the work. You know, I'm going to apply my faith to put in those works, to, to read my Bible. Because that's, that, that's a work. Reading your Bible, that's a work. Fasting, meditating on God, that's all work. So I'm going to apply my faith, true faith, to put in the works. I'm not going to be lazy and slothful like most, like most people. Okay, so number four is oh, also the Bible says in one Corinthians chapter uh, one Corinthians chapter ten verse thirteen that God will always provide a way out for uh, for you to escape uh, the temptation. So God will always provide a way out, and uh, that's what He did. You know, He isolated me. Let me guys know if you guys can relate to that. Um, if you have, if God has isolated you on your journey, if He hasn't, you know, let me know too okay, in the comments. All right, number four is whenever you're about to backslide or fall short, God gives you a way out of temptations, which I just talked about. So one thing I noticed, every time I was about to get into the wrong friendship, the wrong relationship, or maybe if I was already in the wrong relationship, wrong friendship, God always gave me the signs. He always gave me the warnings. He, you know, always, always, God always does, man. And when you don't take heed to the warnings, then judgment happens, okay? When you don't take heed to the signs, okay, destruction, you know, because the warning always comes before destruction. God always warns you before bad things happen in your life, especially if it's, you're the cause of it, okay? And, uh, you know, he always gives you a way out of temptation. The thing is, God could give you a way out of temptation, but it doesn't mean that everyone wants to go out. Some people like to stay in that sin because it feels good, that it pleases their flesh, or maybe because they're lonely. And, man, I'm telling you guys, the wages of sin is death. It's always going to be things that's going to be, you're going to regret down the line. So, yeah, God will always uh, provide a way out, man. Every time I was about to backslide, every time I was about to fall short, God always provided a way. So, and he will provide a way out for you too, okay? Number five is God will strengthen your spirit. Yes, yes, yes. And what I mean by that, God will strengthen your spirit. So, the Bible says in Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 to 17, that your flesh uh, the more you feed your flesh, the more, you know, the more weaker your spirit is. And the more you feed your spirit, the more stronger uh, your spirit is. So that you no longer want to desire to sin. Okay. You no longer, 
you know, are going to fall into these temptations. So this is all correlating together at God strengthens your spirit. He gives you, you know, spiritual weapons, you know, spiritual understanding, you know, the, the sword of the spirit, you know, you have the full armor of God on the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation. He's, he's like armoring you up and preparing you and you're becoming stronger in the spirit. So, and not only do you, so you're strong in the spirit so you won't, you know, go into the temptations, but also you're stronger to fight against, you know, Satan and his minions. Okay, these agents, these demons, you know, these devils, because they're coming after you. They're watching you. Best believe they're watching you. Okay, in the spiritual realm. Now, you, you know, when people say monitoring spirits, you got to understand angels, they monitor us too. The good angels. You have the good angels and the evil angels, the fallen angels. Okay, the good angels, they monitor us too. And they're writing out all the good things you do and all the bad things you do and they're reporting it to God. Okay, in the day of judgment, they all took, they all were writing down the notes. Okay, so you have the good angels. Okay, then you have the evil ones who, you know, the wicked watch the righteous and seek to slay him. You have those demons who are just waiting, just waiting for you to open the door, waiting for you to, you know, just so, you know, to go back and forth with to drain your energy. Okay, so always keep that in mind. I don't want to get off topic here, but God will strengthen your spirit. All right, number six is in the midst of spiritual warfare. God gives you peace, okay? In the midst of spiritual warfare, God gives you peace, okay? The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3, that those who keep their mind on the Lord, will, uh, will have, will, will, God will keep you in perfect peace, okay? So when the devil's attacking you, when you're getting all these, you know, dreams that Satan should attempt you, uh, when people are coming your way, falsely accusing you, lying on you, slandering you, trying to tempt you, when your family is turning against you, when your friends are turning against you, when your loved ones, okay, even in the midst of it, it all, God keeps you in perfect peace because it's all part of this plan. And yes, we all know that they hated him first, so they're going to hate you too, okay? They hated Jesus Christ, Yeshua, so they're going to hate you too. So even in the midst of that at all, you don't even care. Because God has kept you in perfect peace. And you know that if you endear to the end, you will be saved. And those same people who are mocking and scoffing at you, those same people who are being used by the enemy, you know, when it's all said and done, they're going to wish that they didn't do the things they did to you. Okay, but it will be too late. It's going to be too late. Just like how Lot's wife, when she turned back and she became a pillar of salt, it was too late for her to go back. You know, she already chose the side. And in these last days, guys, people are choosing the side. You, you see, God shall to get his people. The devil shall to get his people. And you don't want to be around. You being a child of God, you being a chosen one, you don't want to be around the devil's people because they're just going to lead you astray. All right. Number seven is God sends like-minded brothers and sisters your way. Okay. We all know Proverbs chapter 27, verse 17, iron sharpens iron. So God's going to send you like-minded brothers and sisters, people who, 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 who know the things you know, you know, spiritually, because it's hard in these last days, guys, to talk about, you know, like the Bible, uh, spiritual warfare, you know, you know, things of, uh, in, in, Things that are like spiritual things to, to, to your certain people, because some, some, most people can't understand it. But best believe God will always send. Maybe just you don't have a, that brother yet or the sister yet. In due time, God will send you one, and it's gonna be it's gonna be perfect, you know. Because now you have someone to vent to, you have someone to talk to, someone who understands, you know, someone who's also on the narrow path too, someone who's striving to be on the narrow path too. But also take heed, okay, and use your discernment because the devil sends counterfeits too. Okay, so always use your discernment. The devil can send, you know, false brethren. If, all throughout the Bible, there was false brethren in, in, within the group, you know, trying to lead people astray. Just like how, not, and not just only with Judas and Paul, there was always a false brethren there. So always use your discernment and be wise and understand who's of God and who's of the enemy. Okay, so these are the seven signs, man. God is delivering you from strongholds and the demonic cycles. If you guys made it this far, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and let me know, guys, if there's anything that I'm missing or anything that you have experienced that obviously I couldn't put in the whiteboard because it's so much. But I love you guys so much. These are things that I've been through, and I know a lot of you guys can relate to this, man. If you guys are battling the strongholds, demonic cycles, guys, be patient. Wait on God, and He will strengthen you. You will fly like the eagle, uh, the wings of the eagle. I believe that's in uh, Isaiah chapter 40. Verse 31. I love you guys so much. I'm out. Peace.